Congratulations on being selected as a trainer at Chuck E. Cheese. You have been selected among your fellow cast based on your guest obsession and for your uncompromising standards. Throughout this trainer orientation, you will be guided through some of the material that is crucial for your development as a trainer and coach. Let's begin by stating some of the training values we feel are important. Training is the only time in a person's career that the wheels of motion are stopped for them. We are the directors of fun. Make training fun. Train each cast member better than the last. No train, no gain. Our standards are uncompromising. The minute you accept substandard performance, you just set the new standard. Our job is the difference. Make it better. Take it to the next level. Your manager or trainer should have led you through the number exercise at this point. Let's discuss how this exercise pertains to you as a trainer. As you were first directed to connect the numbers on this page, you were not given much direction and really didn't understand what was expected of you out of the exercise. As the time ran out, you probably found yourself frustrated that you only found a few numbers on the page. Think of this exercise when you first start your training session with the new cast. This is the same way they feel when we first start giving them direction. We need to make sure we have crystal clear expectations set for them as well as communicating and directing our company's standards. Your trainer or manager then led you to take the exercise again. This time though, you were directed to place a line from the upper right hand corner to the lower left hand corner of the page. You were then given a little more direction as the numbers were separated into odds and evens as you connected them between the numbers of 1 and 60. The last time you were led through the numbers exercise, you were directed to place an X on your last page. At this point, your manager, your trainer, coached you along and encouraged you with questions and feedback. You then were shown to follow a specific sequence in which you could find each number located throughout the page. From the top section, lower section, left and then right, and back to the top section again. You continued this pattern as you found it easier to locate each number on the page. This exercise is no different than training our cast. Giving more direction and crystal clear expectations help make understanding easier and more obtainable for the new cast member. Remember this exercise when you catch somebody doing something approximately correct. Help recoach or train something they might have missed. Most importantly, see what direction you could have given to help make things easier and more efficient for the new cast member throughout their training session. The first step in being a good trainer is setting crystal clear direction. They need to know exactly what they're supposed to do. Next, support them. Give them plenty of feedback and have all the tools they need. Let them do it. You now become their shadow. It takes the average adult 20 repetitions for a task to become behavior. Let them practice. And finally, follow up with them and hold them accountable. So why train anyways? There are many different groups of people that benefit from a successfully trained cast. First and most important, the guest receives a great experience every time they come to Chuck E. Cheese's. The cast member feels good about doing a good job and enjoys making a magical atmosphere for our guests. The manager has a great team to help execute the standards and consistently run quality shifts every day. Four, the company. As CEC Entertainment increases opportunity to build sales and maximize profits, we continue to grow and develop our concept of quality family entertainment. As a trainer, you will continue to perform all the job functions you have learned at this point. You will also assist management in training new star cast members in your assigned job functions, as well as cross-training existing cast members in other areas. You will become the eyes and the ears of training standards as you communicate all cast members' progress and performance to the management team. Not only will you continue to polish and shine the diamond in the rough that your management has hired, you will also help maintain the people training books for your designated area. The people training books are a very important part of our training process. By dividing our restaurant into showroom, cash, game room, and a kitchen, we then can organize each cast member and assign a trainer in each area responsible for the review times, validation, and overall test completion. Here are some of the tools to help you in your training process. Utilize the Show Me the Standards boards, as well as your training area, training cabinet, and training tapes and equipment. These tools are only effective when you use them. Make them a part of your training. 
explain the shift board as well as how to clock in and out for each shift. These things have become second nature to you, but understanding the different aspects of the shift board and how to clock in is important to giving the new cast member crystal clear direction. Your cast will do as much or as little as you lead them to do. If a trainee errs, look to see what you could have done to prevent it. Become proactive to problems before they occur. While teaching, tell them why we do things. You'll need to know the answers to these questions ahead of time. If not, find out from your manager. When a cast member understands why we do something, they'll understand it better and ultimately perform better. Our goal in training is not only to give them the information, it's to teach them to think. That way they can look at an area, assess it, and bring it up to standard. It gives them the confidence and ultimately gives our guests a great experience. To better illustrate how to train, I'd like to bring what we do at Chuck E. Cheese University closer to you. When we train managers at Chuck E. Cheese University, it's no different than you training your cast members. Here are the key steps to a successful training program. Number one, know and breathe the standards inside and out. Every word you speak is golden scripture to the new cast member. Teach the standard. Refer to the manual if you have any questions. Two, use the resources we've laid out for you. Training manuals, videos, show me the standards boards, training three by five cards and schedules. Train with the tools by your side. Three, be ready, arrive early to set up your area for that day's training. When you're ready, you can meet the new cast member at the door. What a great first impression. Four, use the tell, show, do, and review method. By telling them what they will be doing, they will retain 10%. By showing your cast member how to do it, they retain 20%. Letting them do it, 90%. And review what you tell, show, and do. They will retain 100% of the information and responsibilities they have in their area. Spend more time showing than telling, and spend the majority of the time letting them do it. Five, constantly ask questions. Quiz the new cast member on all the materials they've learned so far. Give constant feedback and make training fun. The more they say and do a task, the longer they will remember. Hey, have you heard this one? Confucius said, what I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. What I do, I understand. How true it is. Let's look at some of the questions you as the trainer will face throughout your training session. Why do we always have to use scales? We use the scales to ensure a consistent product every time, as well as to help control our food costs. Why do we have to suggestively sell? We suggestively sell to inform the guest of items they may not be currently aware of and to add increased value to their experience. Why do we have blue table stands? We do checkbacks to ensure there are no problems and if so, they are caught early. Why are we so strict on our uniform standards? We want the guest to perceive us as a uniform cast. Because we are a conservative family restaurant, we want to portray those types of characteristics to our guests. Why do we restrict our teenage guests to visit only with their parents or family? We don't allow anyone in our restaurant without a parent or guardian under the age of 18. This is to ensure safety for our little guests and to provide an atmosphere for family and kids between 2 and 12. When asked questions like these, avoid answers like, that's the way it is, it's our policy, and because I said so. Let the cast member know why we train things to such a high standard. If they understand, they will be able and more willing to successfully perform their job. The training wheel graft is composed of knowledge, skill, and attitude. Let's now discuss the training wheel and how each of these fit into the training equation. Knowledge. We must ensure the cast member knows what they are doing. Their speed will eventually follow once the knowledge has been established. A grade of 90% or better is the standard for all tests taken at CEC University. Less than 90% must be retaken within a week. Because we are always developing our concept and finding new ways to improve our overall guest experience, we retest and review videos after the first 90 days and every six months thereafter. This is to ensure any changes within our standards are effectively communicated to the most influential part of our company, you. Two, skills. They must perform both quality and speed adequately. Focus on doing things right through quality as their efficiency will follow. Three, attitude. 
This is the most important part of the training wheel. Having a positive attitude is crucial to learning and successful coaching. To avoid training negative behaviors, try to express sandwich positives by stating positive thoughts at the beginning and ending of each training error. Make them feel good about their progress they're making. Now let's look at a typical training shift. As you can see, the trainer arrives early to her shift and gets the area ready that she will be training. With the use of the manuals, she does a thorough checklist of materials she will need. When she trains the new employee, she always has her manual close by. When explaining an area, make sure and be specific. There is nothing too small to mention to the new cast. For example, at the beverage bar, the trainer is showing the new cast member where everything is and how full to fill lids in the condiment holder. When training, always use the tell, show, do, and review method. Here you see the trainer showing the new cast how to use the microphone for announcements. As a trainer, you are the role model of our restaurant and must have the highest standards possible. This is not just limited to cleanliness and wearing the proper uniform, but also your ability to demonstrate the following trainer attributes. But most importantly, you must be able to teach the new cast members how to execute in as much of the same way as you do. Now let's join Todd, Ryan, and Adam on the game room floor. Now here's a list of trainer attributes and the reasons you have been selected. The first, availability commitment. You must be available to train our new cast members based on the training days and the times outlined in that Team 2 Leader manual. That's right, Todd. They also have to be self-starters. I want to see people taking the initiative to get things done in their stores. Making magic mentality. Going above and beyond for all of our guests by showing them the hospitality that will motivate them to return. Do you believe in magic? Can you train the cast how to execute this magical guest experience? Also, Todd, you need job knowledge. Know the manuals and videos inside and out. Be aware of any new company changes within our product or our standards. Adam, they also have to have the attitude and the desire to train. Do you want to be a teacher? Do you want to be a trainer? The next one's organization. This means being ready for each and every training session. Follow the system that's already in place to train our new cast members. You also have to be credible with your fellow cast members. You need to walk the walk and talk the talk. Patience also. The new cast member doesn't know as much as you. Take your time. Patience is understanding what the new cast member is going through and taking the time to train them right. Enthusiasm. Do you bleed pizza sauce? Make what you're teaching interesting. Keep it fun, upbeat, and interactive. And don't forget to ask questions. Constant quizzing makes training stick. Ask some questions throughout every training session and review the material often. And so there you go. Those are the trainer attributes. You'll be reviewed on those often. Now let's take a look at how our guests view our service when we properly execute the magical experience we desire to train. As I approach the door at Chuck E. Cheese's, I can't help but notice how clean the exterior of the building is, as well as the front entry. A cheerful girl opens the door and welcomes us. She asked us if we were celebrating anything today. I said no. She then asked me if I'd ever been here before. I again said no. She told me I was in for a great time, and then amazingly started to explain how everything works. She also pointed out the different areas of the restaurant and the different areas in the game room. She then told me to ask the cashier about getting free tokens after stamping my hand, and then directed me to the cashier. The cashier enthusiastically greeted me. I then asked her about those free tokens the friendly girl at the front informed me of. She told me about some cool token value deals that I don't think I would have known about. Free tokens, wow. She also pointed out a cool Chucky collectible cup and showed me the fresh looking salad bar. They must be proud of that variety and look how full it looks. She then continued to explain to me the rest of the menu as well as suggesting some value deals that could help save me money. She proceeded to take my order and then counted back my change and gave me my receipt. She even put my tokens in a cup and put all my items on a tray to help me out. I couldn't help but notice how nice that salad bar looks. I'll have to go back and get a salad. Wow, check out all those prizes. No wonder kids want to come here. Hmm, what should I drink? There is such a variety. They really keep this area well stocked and organized. It's always nice to go out for dinner and not have to ask for things. After getting our drinks, we then found a seat located in the showroom. Wow, we just sat down and the hostess had already asked us if we needed a high chair. I'm glad she took that tray out of our way. We don't need it anymore. 
As my wife set our child in the high chair, the hostess got for us. I couldn't help but notice how much there was to do in the show area. I was also amazed at how clean and organized everything looks. As we waited on our pizza, Chucky took the time to specifically play with my child. It was great to see her enjoying herself with Chucky. I didn't realize how much she really likes him. They must know he's the major reason kids come here. A few of the cast members got together and did a cool show out in front of the store. That's a cool idea. It really got the attention of all the guests sitting out in the game room as well as when people came in. I was amazed to also see the manager dancing and singing along with the kids. No wonder everyone follows his lead. At the end of the show, they even threw out free tickets to all the kids. You should have seen the smile on my child's face. She was so excited to get a few extra tickets for dancing in the show with Chucky. One of the cast members even helped my child pick up some tickets. Before we knew it, our food was there. She introduced the food to us and then passed out plates to each of us. She took the red number from me and left this blue stand. I wonder why she did that. This pizza is great. As we continued to eat, she returned to ask us how we were doing and if we needed anything else. So that's what the blue stand was for. What a great system. Somehow they even knew this was my first time here. I bet that girl at Kid Check told someone. After my wife and child left to go play in the game room, she came back to remove our plates and pick up any trash on our table. She also boxed up our pizza so we could take it home to enjoy. I finally made it to the game room and had a little fun myself. As I rode around the carousel, I noticed all the variety of games and the huge sky tubes throughout the kitty area. Who said adults can't enjoy themselves at Chuck E. Cheese's? As I walked around the game room, I noticed a game room attendant helping a child play skee-ball. He was actually showing the child how to play the game. I've only seen attendants at other game places fix games. It's neat to see attendants at Chucky's actually interacting with the kids and looking for problems in advance. As I sat down for a moment in the game area, the same attendant that was helping the little boy play the games introduced himself to me and helped show me around. He also told me if I had any problems with any of the games or needed help playing them, he would be the one that could help. I am blown away by this service. These cast members look like they really enjoy what they do. After spending all of our tokens, we were about ready to leave. Before we left though, we decided to cash in our tickets at the merchandise counter. Still blown away by how full and how much of a selection they had, the girl behind the counter helped talk us through some of the categories and how much my daughter could spend. I thought I'd take a quick trip to the restroom before we left. I was again amazed at how clean the floors and counters were. Everything was stocked and they even had a baby changing station. That's great. It's sure nice to see a person at the front door so no kids wander off or get kidnapped. She asked us if we all had a great time and began checking to make sure all of our numbers matched. I'm glad she checked and said the numbers out loud. At least I know she actually checked the numbers. As we left, she said she hoped to see us tomorrow. I don't know if we'll be back tomorrow but it sure will be soon. What a great experience. They really know what guest service is all about at Chuck E. Cheese's. Now that you have heard the roles and responsibilities of being a trainer, it is now time to take the CEC Team 2 pledge. Repeat after me. I promise to ensure that every guest and cast member leave happy. My job is the difference. I'll take it to a new level by being uncompromising in my standards. I will also ensure that training is fun. Fun check! Revisit your training materials often to refresh your memory and never compromise your standards. The minute that happens, you lower your standards and the rest of the cast accepts substandard performance. Our goal in the training department is to provide you with the most up-to-date material and most effective tools that you will need to train. Feel free to contact any one of us in the training department with your feedback and suggestions. We want to continue evolving our training mentality. We can only become better through your ideas and your feedback. Remember, people train people. Go train. Let's make it happen.
Be organized and ready when a potential applicant comes in to apply. Utilize your application binder like this. You betcha. Looking for a job, huh? Yes, sir. Tell you what, what I want you to do is look through these uh, first four pages right here. And if you agree to each of those uh, items there, fill out an application, return this binder with your application for an audition. Okay? We'll see you soon. Use the interview form as your guide. You can write on it, but do not write on the application. Now begin your interview. To put the applicant at ease, ask questions about them first. Okay, awesome. So what do you like to do for fun? Well, in school and in class. Next, request some background and mechanical information such as previous employment, why they left, what position they are applying for, etc. Then ask questions that will tell you about their personality. Use questions that relate to the area you think they would fit best. Also, have them audition. Okay, well you know at Chuck E. Cheese is that uh, we're all about fun. So how do you feel about uh, performing in front of a group? Well, I'm in the drama class at school so I don't really have a problem with that. Oh really? So you, you wouldn't mind singing like, happy birthday? No. Nope. Well, let's hear you. The next thing you need to do is make a decision. If the applicant is a non-hire, let them know you will call them if an opening is available. Never tell them to call you. Well, Travis, it sure was nice talking to you today. Uh, we're going to make all of our hiring decisions by this Sunday. So if uh, we find something that will meet our needs, your needs, we'll give you a call, okay? Thanks again. If the applicant is a candidate for a second interview, the general manager or area of impact manager will ask even more questions to determine if the candidate is the right choice for the position. If the applicant is the winner you've been looking for, sell and tell. Take the applicant for a tour of the store. Explain cleaning duties and other expectations of the job. Ask them how they feel about doing the various duties. Set up a time for he or she to come back for uniform approval and completion of a new hire paperwork packet, as well as the time of day of orientation. You will also send home a three-page packet, the parent letter, appearance standards, and the fun facts. Now that winner is well on his or her way to becoming one of our awesome StarCast members. Prior to the cast member's orientation, take time to call their parents. Welcome their son or daughter to your team. Let the parents know they can call you anytime with concerns they may have and that you want this experience to be a win-win situation. You need to communicate to your team about your newest cast members. Discuss this at the directional using the manpower plan. Highlight their training schedules on the weekly schedule and let your Team 2 trainers know about the upcoming training sessions. This will ensure everyone on the team is ready for our new stars. We call all of this communication the first part of the WOW process. We want to welcome our winner to the team in a quality way. We welcome our winners by the Application Binder, Area of Impact Manager and GM involved in the hiring process, once hired, cast member receives three-page take-home packet. Area of Impact Manager or GM calls cast to welcome aboard and to confirm start date. Now that you have all these applications of definite winners, possible candidates and non-hires, you need to keep them organized for future reference. Remember, applications are legal documents that must be kept on file for one full year. One way to keep them organized is to set up a filing system. Label a file in your cabinet for current month's applicants. Within this file, place four colored folders, green, blue, yellow, and red. Make sure the interview guides with notes are attached to the applications and place them into the corresponding file. Green labeled second for all scheduled second interviews. Blue labeled back of house and yellow labeled front of house. These two folders represent applicants we'd like to call at a later date when a position is available for them. Label the red folder NOH, meaning none of house. This is for those applicants that didn't fit the standard or are no longer interested in a job with Chuck E. Cheese's. At the end of the month, just transfer the folders to a master storage box for the year. Now, much like RQS, we need to get ready and execute the training of this new cast member. We have a great training program and training tools if we use them right. But do not try to reinvent the wheel here. Follow it and you will see results. Let's review the training process and expectations. To prepare for a new trainee, you must first include him or her on the schedule, along with a Team 2 trainer that is designated only for training on those specific days. The Team 2 must know exactly what he or she is training each day and that it is communicated on the shift board. 
As the manager on duty, you are responsible for the quality of each day's training and the labor dollars used. Be sure to account for these extra hours on your daily labor plan. Do you have all necessary training aids available in your store to set your trainer up for success? Are these up to date with new standards? Let's take a look. Videos. Orientation, Service General, and Job Function. Manuals and Tests. School of Service and School of Kitchen. Trainer Cards. Show me the standard cards. Clean and Functional Workstation. Do you have the proper tools to follow CEC standards? You must be ready for each and every training shift. Let the training begin. This is the time to execute. Remember, orientation day is the first day of training, a people day. So make the training area inviting and the session fun. Whenever possible, a booth in the showroom or game room is the best place. Here are the items that you'll need. Orientation video, flip chart, cast member handbook, cast member test, school of kitchen and service manual, training schedule, pen, grab bag or other perk, balloons, and big cheese sticker. Let's greet that new hire at the door. Hi Heather, welcome to your first day at Chuck E. Cheese's. I'm so glad that you decided to join our team. I have a big cheese sticker here for you so that everybody gets to know you while you're here this week. Um, before we get started, let's check your uniform. Let's see, your hair looks great, shirt, belt, shorts, socks, you look great. Let's go ahead and get started by clocking in. Begin by explaining today's agenda. Well, Heather, we have a lot to cover today in orientation. We're going to be covering everything from Chucky Basics to your training schedule, sexual harassment, safety and security. You're also going to have a chance to meet some of your fellow cast members and participate in one of our awesome live shows. Sounds fun? Sounds great. All right, well, first we're going to start off by going through your handbook using the flip chart, and then you're going to watch the video to review. Go over today's plan in detail so the new cast member will know just what to expect. He or she is likely to be quite nervous on their very first day, so the more they know, the better they will feel. As you follow the flip chart, address each subject thoroughly and discuss with your trainee. So Heather, if you don't notify the manager in an adequate amount of time, whose responsibility do you think it is to cover your shift? Mine? Exactly. Well, what if there's an emergency? Well, emergencies are something that we can't predict, so in extreme situations, we work with you on that. Remember, this is a walking, talking orientation. Get on your feet. There's no need to be stuck in one place. Make the session fun. After you've covered the orientation flip chart thoroughly, direct your new cast member to the orientation quizzes in the test booklet and have the trainee watch the video as a review tool. You must be available to answer questions during the video. After the video, have the trainee take the orientation quiz. Do a quick review and answer any questions the trainee may have. Once you review the video, participate in a live show with your new trainee and some more of the cast. It's time to set the expectation. Every guest leaves happy and have fun. The last part of your cast orientation should cover the training agenda for the week, as well as the tools that are available for the trainee to use. Write down the schedule using the cast test booklet and explain what will be happening each day and how to use the School of Service and Kitchen Manual. This is your School of Service Manual. It's going to tell you everything that you need to know before uh, you actually get with your trainer. Tonight, you can go home and read the service general section. Remember that all training is done on the clock, so the new star cast member must complete all tests inside the store. Well, Heather, I wanted to let you know that we are a growing company, and we have a lot of career opportunities. I started out as a cast member, now I'm the general manager of the store. Um, first step to that, of course, is becoming a team leader. Now, to do that, you need to demonstrate certain attributes like leadership, job knowledge. As you wrap up the training day, introduce the trainee to a few new cast members and have them welcome him or her to the team. Before your trainee clocks out, review tomorrow's agenda. Now, Heather, remember tomorrow is service general training, so be sure to study that section in your book tonight. Make sure you show up in full uniform tomorrow. At least she's going to be your trainer. She's going to greet you at the door. I'm really excited to have you here. Great job. We'll see you tomorrow. Day two of training is CEC general. Once again, be sure that all the materials are ready and the trainer is clear of today's goals. Meet the new cast member at KidCheck with the Team 2 trainer. Hey Heather, we sure are glad to have you back for your second day of training. Here's another sticker for you since you are our big cheese for the week. Let's go ahead and check your uniform before we get started. If the cast member is missing a uniform part, 
they must correct the problem before they can clock in for training. Set the expectation now so you won't have to worry about it later. Shorts, socks, shoes, perfect. This is Austin. He's going to be training on Service General today. You're going to be watching a couple of videos, taking a store tour, and then heading into your area for some introductory training. I'm going to leave you in his capable hands now, but I will be checking in on you in a little bit. Um, remember, pay attention and have fun! As you know, using the tell, show, do, review method is the key element to thorough training. The Team 2 leader assigned to training the new cast member must utilize all tools available. Videos, manuals, training cards, tests, and most of all, role play. Role play allows the cast member to have more of a hands-on approach to learning rather than just verbal instruction. Be involved in the role play with your Team 2 and the new cast member. Let them see that you are just as much a part of their development as the Team 2 leader is. You will be able to determine the quality of the training by being directly involved. Today's training is not just about knowledge. It's also about making magic and having fun. Let the trainee participate in a live show, ticket splashes, and interact with guests. By the time the training week is over, they'll be pros at making magical moments for our guests. Complete the training session with a question and answer period with both you and the trainer. Quizzing will make it stick. Don't forget to have the cast member take the test for CEC General Day. Inform the trainee of tonight's homework on job function training and end the shift with a huddle. Alright, good job today guys. Let's stick our hands in the center and count on three to Whoa Chucky. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa Chucky! Good All job! Right. All right. It's imperative that the Team 2 sticks with the training schedule, so review today's goals and be prepared for the training session. Okay, Austin, why don't you go ahead and check your training area, make sure it's clean, all your training materials are ready to go. I will go get your video ready so that uh, we can meet Heather at the door 15 minutes before she's supposed to be here. As with each day of training, meet your trainee with a big cheese sticker and a uniform check. Nothing less than perfect will do. Job function training follows the same format. Tell, show, do, review. The trainee needs to be as much hands-on today as possible and receive feedback on all his or her performance while practicing. Once again, have a review session at the end of training and a big whoa checky to send them on their way. Now it's time to see how the training paid off. As a manager, you should be extremely involved in the validation process. Meet and greet your new cast member at the front door with a big cheese sticker and a uniform check. As the trainer has the new cast member demonstrate each function, help with coaching and feedback. It is important that the cast member feels confident to serve our guests. If not, retrain them. By now, all of the trainees' tests have been graded. 90% or better is passing. Anything less requires a retake within one week. Once the cast member has passed all tests and has successfully completed the validation process, place his or her test booklet completely filled out in the training books, which corresponds to his or her area. The manager accountable to the trainer and trainee in his or her training book is then responsible for ensuring that the cast member is revalidated every three to six months. Your new cast member has successfully completed all five days of training. Fill out the graduation certificate on the back of his or her test booklet and congratulate them along with several other cast members on center stage. Attention all Chuck E. Cheese guests, we're here to congratulate Heather on her successful completion of Chuck E. Cheese class training. And to present her with an official Chuck E. Cheese graduation certificate. Alright. Let's get a big round of applause for Heather. Okay, now let's all gather around and give her a big whoa Chuck E. One, two, three. Whoa, whoa Chuck E. Pretty clear on what the training standards are, right? We must execute each training shift as we do each RQS shift. Now, who's going to help you do all that? That's right, your team too. How many do you have in your store? Is that enough? I'll tell you that you need to have at least two in each area to cover all the training needs of your store. Your team too are the responsibility of the area of impact manager. The number of trainers and quality is up to you. Do you have two trainers in each area? If you don't, you need to pick your best, period and then develop them to train your new cast. 
You may have already viewed the How to Train video. If not, please watch it. Here are a few other thoughts on our Team 2. In selecting your Team 2, you should think about the specific attributes that we are looking for in a successful trainer for Chuck E. Cheese's. Availability and commitment, make magic mentality, job knowledge, attitude, desire to train, organization, credibility with fellow cast members, patience, enthusiasm, and effective use of questions. Step one, orientation is the time to set crystal clear expectations for your new team two, and also to go through their roles and responsibilities as a trainer, leader, and coach. During orientation, make sure you watch the How to Train video with your Team 2 candidate. This will allow you to highlight key points. Step 2. After orientation, the Area of Impact Manager trains a new cast member alongside the potential Team 2. Show how the training session should be conducted and continually use the Tell, Show, Do, Review method. Step 3. Now it's time for the new Team 2 to train a new cast member while the manager validates them. The GM needs to be present during this step at some point to complete the process. Once all the training phases have been completed, the new Team 2 will take his or her test. When the test is completed, the manager will grade it and discuss the results with the Team 2 candidate. As a certified Team 2, they will be responsible for the following. New cast member development. New cast member training doesn't stop after the initial five days of training. A Team 2 should be able to guide in the development of the new cast member through the next few weeks, give feedback on the new cast member's performance, and coach them to exceed the standard. Ongoing cast member development. Once the cast member begins feeling secure in his or her position, he or she may have interest in being cross-trained in another area. At this time, your Team 2 needs to be ready and willing to assist in this training. Shift leadership responsibilities. A Team 2 is an extension of you. Give them shift responsibilities such as helping to fill out the shift board in their area, distributing breaks, or checking pre-closing duties. The Cornerstone Standard Bearer. Does your Team 2 really know what the cornerstones are? The Team 2 must have an uncompromising approach to holding our standards high. The first person a cast member will look to for guidance is their Team 2. Grading the guest experience. As managers, we determine the success of our shifts by grading the guest experience. Have your Team 2 grade his or her part and compare it with that of the entire shift. Then have the Team 2 set goals to make the next guest experience even better. And of course, teaching profit in every training situation. Making money is something that should become second nature and is taught during every training session. Hey, Heather, what's up? Just making some boxes for the guests. Boxes here only cost nine cents. Which ones do you think you should be giving to the guests? Phone ones? Awesome. Alright. And did you also know that every time we give plates to our guests instead of distributing them and they don't use them, we're wasting money that can be used for the store and raises for us. Really? Yeah. Remember, once a trainer, not always a trainer. You must keep them on their toes to be the best of the best. While they are driving the standards, they should be recognized for doing it. What are you doing to reward your team twos? Here are some things our premier general managers are doing to recognize their training teams. Free meals instead of the typical 50% discount. What a way to put money back in their pocket. Monthly team two meeting. Give them a forum to express their frustrations or to communicate their goals and accomplishments. Allow team twos to attend management directionals at least once a month. The more they communicate with the management team, the better they will understand the focus of each manager's area of impact. Give them Team 2 pins or order them the approved Team 2 uniform shirt. Standing out from the rest of the cast shows their importance. Lastly, encourage their development to be coordinators, managers, or part of a new unit opening team. Help them build confidence by having them set and attain goals. A tool that will help in planning for future management candidates within your store is the Who's on Deck. When you focus on Who's on Deck, you are planning the steps of each and every member of your team. You will be ready when asked by your DM or AD for candidates for available management positions. Wow, 
What a lot of information so far. We are ready to wrap up this video, but we can't do it without talking about the coaching and counseling of your team. Your job is one of a coach. Look at successful coaches out there. Good coaches build great teams. And this is what they're doing. Assisting. Teach, help, and guide them to the desired result. Motivating. Every person needs certain things. Praise, recognition, showing concern, caring, etc. The success is in doing it right. Challenging. If you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. Keep them out of the rut. Be a fresh set of eyes for them. Raise the bar standards of excellence. Improving. Make them better. Give them your wisdom. Just like the coach of a baseball team leads the team to victory, you must do the same with your cast by leading the shift. Someone must always be in control of what is happening and giving crystal clear direction. Remember, your team will only be as good as you are. Expect high performance and teach them how to attain it. A coach gives constant feedback to their players. We call this feedback training moments. Hey Heather. Hey. You know, you really have it under control up here. I heard your greeting, it was awesome. One thing I am concerned about is that I didn't see you calling out the numbers. I didn't know that was a big deal. Well, to us it may not be a big deal because, you know, we know that you're checking, but to the guests that's the only way that they know that we're actually checking. That makes sense. So you can call out the numbers and keep up that awesome greeting? No problem. All right, you're going to be a pro at this before you know it. There comes a time when you also need to counsel underperformers. So let's see how to bring them up to our level. This is a necessary part of your job. Let's see how to handle those situations. Joel, you're not using your skills. I'm disappointed. Can you tell me why you're not using your skills? I'm just busy trying to get it out of here. Well, it's really important that we use our skills. There's a couple of reasons. One of them is that we want to be sure that we give a consistent pizza for every guest. Do you know what the other reason might be? Food cost. Exactly right. Can we agree that you're going to use your skills from now on? Yes, I will. All right. Hey, Joel, how are you? Hi, how are you? It's good to see you. Hey, whoa, what's up with your uniform, man? Uh, your shirt? Your, 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 your shirt, my goodness. You shaved today? No, I didn't. Okay, is there a reason why? I uh, was just running late, didn't have time. Okay, you know that's not our standard, right? Yes. We want you to be in perfect uniform uh, from the get-go. Um, I, I, I can't have you working today. There's just no way. You need to be in full uniform for the guests, for the other employees that work here. Um, I can't allow this to happen. What's gonna happen next time you walk in like this, Joel? This is the last time. Send me home again? I'm not gonna send you home, Joel. That's the problem. Okay? You've, you've proven to me that you can do this. I need you to come in proper uniform. I want to look for someone else that can do it better. Okay? Fix yourself up. I want to see you back in 15 minutes so we can have a great shift. Okay? As you can tell from the examples, Go. there's a fine line between a cast member who needs coaching on a standard and an underperformer who needs some serious counseling. Your job as a manager is to distinguish the difference and handle each situation accordingly. When evaluating the performance of your team, focus on these four simple questions. First, does everyone understand our purpose? Our purpose is to serve the guest, and if we're not serving the guest, we should be serving someone who is. Second, does everyone understand each other's expectations? This is a two-way communication. Not only should you set the expectation for your team, but you need to know exactly what your team expects of you. Third, are you hiring the right people? Is each person on your team in a position that best suits their abilities, personality, and lastly, are you coaching everyone to become better at what they do? Remember, if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. Now you've seen the process from getting applicants in the door, hiring, training, developing Team 2s, to coaching and counseling. It's your turn to take what you've learned, get out there, and develop a team that you can be proud of. Okay, well you've been assigned your area of impact. Now, what are you going to do to build your quality team? Well, in this video we put together how to pre-recruit, recruit, train your cast members, develop your team twos, and then most importantly, how to coach and counsel your team. So let's get after it. Hiring is a key part of building our business. It is the most important decision you'll make as a manager. You can't wait for that person to walk in the front door, nor will you find them in your McLean order guide. 
You have to have a plan and then get after it. Having a plan we'll call pre-recruiting and executing it is a way to build a great team. Before you can begin recruiting, you must create a manpower plan. First, calculate your ideal number of cast members. You should have 1.5 cast members for every $1,000 in average sales. So if your average is $30,000 per week, then you need 45 cast members. Now take this number and add your turnover, how many cast members you lose on average. Next, subtract your current cast level and divide that number by the weeks in your plan, 13 weeks for the quarter. This will give you the number of cast members you need to hire each week. Now that you know how many you need to hire, you need to find out how much you're going to pay them to stay competitive in your market. Visit other stores and restaurants in the area. Ask the managers what their starting and average wages are. Remember, we don't want to be the highest paying employer around, but we don't want to be the lowest either. Here are a few ideas to get you started without leaving your store. Ask your current cast members if they have friends that need a job. This is a great situation. Your cast members will get to work with their friends. You can pay them a referral bonus if their friend stays through a 90-day probationary period, and you get applicants coming in that are similar to your current cast member. Birds of a feather flock together. Another thing you can do from your store is go through all those Snag a Job and CEC Jobs applications you receive. Call them and set up some interviews. Other options from the store include contacting your local and or state employment agencies. If these aren't working for you, then you have to get out of the store to recruit. Visit local high schools and colleges. Talk to the counselors and co-op teachers. Find out if they will make announcements or post job announcements to inform their students that you are hiring. A second option is to recruit from local businesses. Remember, we don't want to make enemies in the business community, and the manager of that establishment may have kids, making him or her a potential guest. So let's see how to do this correctly. All right, there's your card back. Great, Heather. You have a nice day. Great. Hey, listen, I'm the manager over at Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. So if you have any friends that are looking for a job, feel free to send them on over. All okay? Right. Great. Nice to meet you. Now that you have a plan, make sure you have systems in place to keep organized through the next phase. Hiring. Through organization and communication to the entire management team, trainers, and new cast members, we won't lose any winners due to confusion. Welcome aboard. As you know, our purpose is to serve the guests. If you're not serving the guests, you should be serving someone who is. As a manager with our company, you have two roles to fulfill, and they are lead and to teach. In order to ensure that every guest leaves happy, you must lead your cast through running a quality shift, or RQS. Now there are three phases of RQS. They are get ready, execute, and get ready again. Let's take a look at the tools and behaviors of RQS. Getting ready is your first phase. You need to spend 80% of your time on product and 20% on facility. That 80% includes assisting your cast. For example, roll out some dough, help with a salad bar, check on cotton candy and see that all the games are 100%. You set the pace for your cast by being hands-on. To help assist you in the get ready phase, utilize the tools available, such as the shift board and the opening checklist. When used correctly, the checklist can assure that you do not overlook anything. Let's take a look at the get ready phase in action.
about being a robot and pencil whip in the checklist. You must get in there, roll your sleeves up, and RQS each and every section. Now it's time for the second phase, execute. This is where the action is. The simple rule to running a quality shift is following the flow of your guest and staying one step ahead of them. Ask yourself, what's important now? When? If it's at standard, praise it. If not, get it fixed. Always focus on the top five RQS of each area. Everyone, please take out your RQS basics card for a brief review. Training GM, go ahead and pause the video for an RQS top five tour of your store. While running your shift, check your sales every hour so you can track projections versus actual sales, as well as labor. This information is available at any register. If sales are slower than projected, give half hour breaks or send people home. Labor is our largest controllable expense. But don't trip over dollars to pick up pennies. Your guest always comes first. During the week, Monday through Friday, you'll be very hands-on. There'll be times when you only have two or three cast members on at a time and you may need to work a position. Always stay positive and focused on your shift. To help you run a better shift, have a Team 2 scheduled to help focus on the five RQS in their area. The key to RQS is all about your team, hiring the right people, training them to standard, and spending time with each cast member during the shift. Upon arrival, check their uniform and set the expectation by reviewing their duties on the shift board. Use one minute coaching sessions throughout your shift and catch them doing the right things. Lastly, make sure they are able to have their scheduled breaks so they can take a few minutes to eat, relax, and get ready to take care of the guest. By spending that time with your cast, you will increase productivity and build ownership mentality. Remember how you treat your cast is how they will treat your guests. Your cast is an extension of you. By teaching them the standards and giving them the direction they need, they will want to make sure that every guest leaves happy. Near the end of your shift, you'll have shift change. This is where you spend half of your time on facility and the other half of your time on product. It's very important that you set up each manager for success, so take great care in setting up the PM manager. The tips for a successful shift change are as follows. Pull and count down AM drawers and make your AM deposit. Count safe with PM manager and sign safe log. Make sure the PM shift has enough products on hand. Is the PM shift fully staffed? If not, call in cast members to cover the shifts. Are the PM parties set up and ready to go? Have a 10 minute mini directional with the PM manager and grade the guest experience. Once again, the PM manager will follow the checklist and focus and on running a quality dinner shift. This brings us to the third phase of RQS, getting ready again. A quality close is a must to ensure that the next day's team is set up for success. A PM manager should spend 20% on product and 80% on facility. As a PM manager, it is important to not let your cast get so focused on the clothes that they forget about the guest. You will need to remain visible on the floor to drive the clothes as well as to meet the guest's needs. Utilize the closing checklist for each area and break down the closing duties throughout the shift. Don't save it all until the doors are locked. Here are a few key tips to a quality close. Make sure breaks are assigned and taken. Assign pre-closing duties and time expectations. Be visible throughout the close as well as after the doors are locked. Use closing checklists. Inspect what you expect. As a closing manager, you set the pace for your cast. Your cast will do as much or as little as you lead them to do. Our guests come to Chuck E. Cheese's for one reason, to have fun. Our job as managers is to ensure that every guest leaves happy. Now in order to accomplish this, we must run quality shifts on a day-to-day -day basis. Use the tools and your skills to execute the standard. Remember, you make it happen. As you know, our guests come to Chuck E. Cheese's for one reason, to have fun. Even though our guests like eating pizza and visiting with Chucky, they spend most of their time in the game rooms, playing games, riding rides, and making their way through the sky tubes. Because we generate a significant amount of money in this area, it is very important that you know as much about the games as you do dough and salad bar. As you watch this video, you'll begin to understand exactly what it means to become games passionate. How important is the game room to us? On our P&L, game revenue is about 27% of our sales. This number, however, is a little misleading because it only includes money from the bill changers, 
game pool quarters, and tokens sold by the cashiers. Coupons, value meals, and birthday parties all give out lots of tokens, yet the majority of that money goes to food sales. If it went into our games, our game sales would increase to over 40%. 40%! Wow! Now will you pay more attention to your game room? Every day when you begin each shift, you always check the quality of the dough and salad bar. Unfortunately, you can't just look at the games to see if they work. You've got to perform a coin drop before each shift and play the games to ensure they work properly. You'll have many more satisfied guests and far less game problems when you start each shift this way. It is imperative that you understand how every game plays in your store and how to fix problems that may occur. With this knowledge, not only will you be able to perform a coin drop accurately, but you will also be able to coach your game room attendants on common issues. Here's a list of key components of a working game that you should be looking for while performing the coin drop. Are the coin mechs accepting coins and triggering plays? Are the ticket mechs dispensing the correct amount of tickets? Is the game scoring properly? Are there any lights not working? Is the sound working? Is it too loud or not loud enough? Are there any safety issues? Sharp edges, seat belts, or sensors? If applicable, is the number of balls correct? Is the time set at proper length? And lastly, is the game clean inside and out? Now let's take a look at the two most common malfunctions of any game, the coin and ticket mechs. Coin mechs. Most games have this coin mech in them. They test four things, diameter, thickness, weight, and magnetic materials. All of our games accept quarters and tokens. The screw adjusts the mech to take both. Adjust one quarter inch turn at a time until both coins will drop freely through. Coins too small fall through, coins too large or with strong magnetic properties will get caught in the mech. Ticket mechs. To our guest, ticket dispensers are the portal of fun, that mysterious place where our tickets emerge to make every guest a big winner. Remember, every child's a winner, and that means they all receive at least one ticket from ticket dispensing games. A common malfunction is tickets will not stop dispensing. If this happens, remove the plastic connector to shut off the motor and adjust tickets. Many times the optical eye is dirty, or the spring is not pushing the tickets far enough over to the eye. Since the dispenser reads the notches on the side of the tickets, adjust the spring and blow out the eye to remedy the problem. Once fixed, you can use the advance button on the side to advance tickets. Note, upon exiting the ticket mech, tickets are scored so you can tell if they were dispensed through a game. And remember, we always want Chucky face up to greet our big winners. After winning all those tickets, our little guests head over to the ticket munchers. You must make sure that the ticket munchers are empty daily and that preventive maintenance is performed on these machines weekly. When completing this preventative maintenance, make sure the light and fan are functioning properly and the safety switch is operational. Clean all interior parts and ensure the cutting blade and motor are functioning correctly. Doing these will prevent many problems during busy times. As the manager on duty, you should always be aware of any game problems. Be sure to exhaust all possible solutions, including contacting your technician, before placing an out-of-order sign on a game. Since most games have adjustable ticket standards, you need to ensure you know how each game pays out. Daily communication is important, so your technical manager knows of any game problems. Also at your weekly directional, you should be provided with any dispensing changes so we can provide the best value to our guests. Token and ticket security is vital to controlling costs. A few reminders. All tokens and tickets are to be locked and secured. Tokens should either be locked in the dispensing hopper at cash or bagged and stored in the bill changer. Tickets and ticket muncher receipts, of course, are destroyed once they're redeemed. A vital part of the guest entertainment experience is a properly working show. It is best to spend time with your technical manager to see what is done to maintain the show. Every day, you should listen and look at the show for slow movements, no movements, air leaks, or excessive noise. Communicate to the technician if there are any issues. Preventative maintenance is not only important for the proper operation of your show, but is also critical for your games. Here are some key points to look at to keep your games in top-notch condition. Vacuum the inside. Make sure there's no dust, trash, or coins. Clean and maintain coin and ticket mechs. Check for any safety or cosmetic issues. Follow up with your assistant technician daily to ensure all games are being completed per the preventive maintenance schedule. Also remember your detailed cleaning plan. Pay close attention to the carpets under the games, the foot areas, all cracks and corners, and keep an eye out for those scuff marks. Now, we can't forget about one of our key attractions, the sky tubes. Safety is our number one rule. Train your game room attendants to pay special attention to this area to assure the safety of our guests. Because the sky tubes is one of the main sources of fun, it also needs to look premier. Refer to the maintenance video for detailed cleaning instructions. The most important thing to know about the game room is to open the lines of communication not only by communicating with other managers, 
game room attendants, and technicians, but also by introducing yourself to your guests. This will open the doors to future friendly interactions because they will know you are always there to help them. Be Games Passionate. By taking care of the minor repairs now, you can avoid the costly ones that may occur down the road. Spend some more time with your general manager and technician to learn more about our games and rides. Not only is it 40% of our revenue, but it's the main reason the guests are here. Thanks, Mike. Now that you have the understanding of Game Room, we need to get a better look at the entertainment P&L. You understand the dough production sheet, product usage, and par levels, right? Well, it's just as important to understand the numbers of the Game Room. All locations have a game package which has a balance of video, rides, and skill games. Each week a game pool is done and the coins are removed and meter readings are taken. This information is recorded on a game collection report, which breaks down the information for each game and ride. The totals on this report are then transferred to the entertainment P&L. In order to have an accurate entertainment P&L, the numbers reported on the game collection report must be correct. Let's have John Black walk us through the numbers. Okay, let's make this a training session. Grab your calculator, your pen, and your reports, and let's get started. Okay, the first area is game sales. Game sales are sales that are rung up at the register, which include token deals, percentage of coupons, also includes the bill changer, and quarters pulled from the games. A good measure of a successful game room is an increase in game sales and percentage. Next is tickets dispensed. This is the number of tickets dispensed based on the meter readings taken from each game. Make sure each game is giving out the proper amount of tickets. Be sure to refer to the game standards book which contains all game settings and how each game is played. Next will be place collected. This is a physical count of all coins collected from games and rides. It is very important that the coins are being sorted and counted accurately and that all meters and coin counting machines are working properly. Ticket per token. This is calculated by dividing the total number of tickets dispensed by the total number of plays collected. Ticket per token should be 3.1 on average for all games. This ensures value for the guest and cost control for us. If it is too high or too low, your technician can adjust some of the games to get the correct range. You want to be sure no games pay out below two tickets per token or above six. If not, there will be lines at high payout games while low payout games are empty. Be sure your game room is balanced. The next four categories are the same as your food cost. First is beginning inventory. That's all the gold tokens on hand at the beginning of the week. This number must be the same as the prior week's ending token inventory. Purchase tokens are tokens ordered by your district manager. These tokens should be added to the token inventory immediately. There should be enough tokens in the inventory in the location so that during the highest week in sales, no tokens have to be pre-pulled from the games. Total tokens issued is tokens that were dispensed through the cash register and bill changer. These are the tokens that can be accounted for, including free tokens and manager game tokens. Control variance is accountable on-hand tokens versus actual on-hand tokens. It's exactly the same thing as your ideal food cost versus your actual food cost. Tokens collected is all the gold tokens collected from all the games and rides during the game collection. Collected versus issued. This is the difference between what was issued through cash register and bill changer and what was collected from the games and rides. Tokens dispensed by the cashier and bill changers are almost always greater than tokens collected since many guests leave with a few tokens in their pocket. If you're collecting more than you're dispensing, double check your token security because tokens are getting into the games yet no revenue is being generated. A large positive number could mean you have a theft problem. Ending token inventory, actual on hand tokens plus the tokens collected from the games and the rides. Your actual token value. We talk a lot about token value. This is how much a token is really worth. Since we give out many free or at a discount, a token is not really worth 25 cents. It's different in every store based on your product mix, coupons, and birthday parties. But it ranges from 12 cents to 14 cents. To compute your actual token value, divide your total game sales by the tokens collected. Compare that to your ideal token value, 
which is the total game sales divided by tokens dispensed. Token value plays an important role in your merchandise cost. Canadian locations may have a higher token value due to different currencies. Ideal token value. Game sales divided by tokens issued by the bill changers and registers. Poor token control can increase or decrease ideal token values to unacceptable levels. Token value variance is the difference between actual and ideal token value. This number will increase depending on how many tokens the guests bring home. This should always be a positive number. Quarter pull is the total number of quarters divided by total plays. This should be 1.3 to 2%. If it's too low, games aren't taking quarters or quarters are disappearing. Check that ratio. Now that was a great training session. Let's take this information and put it to use. Just like pizza and our salad bar, our games and rides are a product too. Our company provides a game standards book which contains all the settings and how each game is played. By following the standards and utilizing the entertainment PL, we can control costs and increase revenue. You've learned a lot in this video. There's a lot more to learn. Go ask your technician and really go to school on the numbers. Just like you understand dough production and salad bar and par levels, you need to understand the game room. Have fun. Have you ever been to a restaurant where you felt like there was no one there who really cared about your dining experience? It might have been an indifferent server whose focus seemed to be on a conversation about last night's football game rather than taking your order. Or a cashier that argued with you when you politely informed her that she gave you the wrong change. Or maybe when you finally did decide to tell the manager, he walks up and says, so uh, what do you want me to do about it? Sadly enough, we've all been through one of these scenarios, or at least something like it. I can tell you though that here at Chuck E. Cheese's, it's all about the guests. Our operating objective is every guest leaves happy, not half or most, every single guest. So why do we call them guests rather than the C word? Well, let's take a look at the actual definitions of the words. Customer, someone who pays for goods or services. Guest, one who is a recipient of hospitality at the home or table of another. Also, a distinguished visitor to whom hospitality is extended. Need we say more? Every day, through coupons and commercials, we invite those distinguished visitors, our guests, to our home, Chuck E. Cheese's. So as hosts of our extinguished visitors, we extend our hospitality. While you see many regulars in your store, the average guest comes in four times a year and spends about $35 for a visit. That's about $140 a year. Each time they leave our establishments, we don't want them to think about how much money they spent, we want them to think about the value they received and what a great time they had. How do we do this? Well, it's as simple as walking and talking. We must go out and visit our guests. Through proactive guest visitation, many small problems can be resolved before they become a serious issue resulting in a disappointed guest. Let's take a look at an example. Hi, how are y'all doing today? I'm Kevin, I'm the manager, and you are? Oh, my name is Renee. Uh, hi, Renee. I was just noticing that you had 10 number 21 on your table, and uh, I was just wondering, has it been a little bit long y'all wait on your pizza? Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I think it's been about 15 minutes. Yeah, that's a little bit too long. I tell you what, let me go in the kitchen, check on your pizza, and I'll be right back, okay? Okay, thanks. You bet. All right, Renee, well, I have a good news, bad news situation here. The bad news is it's going to be about 10 more minutes on your pizza. But the good news is I brought a couple of salads for you and your husband, and I brought some more tokens for the kids so they can play some more games while you're waiting. Oh, awesome. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Anything else I can get for you, just let me know. All right. Thank you. You bet. Notice how this manager took the time to not only fix a potential problem, but also to extend hospitality. This simple interaction is what sets us apart from our competition. Now, don't think that you have to sit at every guest table to have a quality visit. You can pop in at Kid Check, at Merchandise, or while they're placing their order at Cash. You can get them a high chair or take their beverage tray to their table. Or how about showing them how to play a game? The trick is to be visible and anticipate their needs. Hospitality drives repeat visits and drives sales. Remember, you are the example to our cast. If they know you care about the guests, they will too. 
Uh, excuse me, excuse me. We lost a token right over there in that game. Um, the game room, uh, game attendants over there. What you've just witnessed is a guest buster. A guest buster is anyone who says no to a guest. Some examples may include. No, I'm sorry, I'm off the clock. <coughs> no, we can't make one quarter of your pizza cheese. <coughs> oh, you want a drink refill? Oh, beverage bar's right over there. You can just help yourself. <coughs> Whatever the situation, remember, it's all about the guest. And the answer is always yes. Our job as managers is to make it happen. And we are here to make sure they have the best time possible. Let's take a quiz and see how you do. Question number one. A birthday party shows up at 4 p.m. when the reservation sheet says they're scheduled at 2. They insist that the time was supposed to have been changed and that the reservation sheet is wrong. You're completely booked with parties and you're on wait. What do you do? Your reservation shows that it was at 2 o'clock. We tried to confirm last Thursday, but nobody answered. And well, right now, we're all booked up. You're more than welcome to wait in line behind all these other guests, but I'm sorry, there's nothing else I can do for you. Ma'am, I am so sorry. First off, I just wanted to let you know we're going to take care of everything for you, okay? I think I have a table that's about to open up back here. I tell you what, let me help you with your gifts. I'll get you in a booth right over here. I'll get your kids some tokens so they can play some games while you're waiting. I'll get your table set up as soon as I can. I'll get your ho a hostess with you right now. That way she can go ahead and get your order turned in, okay? Let me get these gifts for you and follow me. The correct answer is B. We're all human and miscommunication does occur. Let them in and show them the hospitality of you and your cast members. They'll be telling everyone about their visit to Chuck E. Cheese's, so make it an awesome one. Word of mouth can make or break any business. Question number two. A guest approaches the salad bar for the second time with a one-trip salad bowl. What do you do? A. Stop them and inform them that they can't get fruit in their bowl because it's their second trip. B. Say nothing to the guest and retrain your cashier on how to sell all-you-can-eat salads. If you answered A, you're a guest buster. It may shock you that B is the correct answer, but that extra 20 cents of product the guest gets is far less than we spend on advertising to get them in. Why risk losing a $140 guest over 20 cents? Now occasionally, things may go wrong. Some instances are easy to handle and others may be a little bit more complicated depending on the situation. Complaints are our guest way of giving us a second chance to do the right thing. It's a great opportunity to create raving fans, but early detection is the key. The best time to deal with a guest complaint is while a complaint is happening. 70% of guests will return if the problem is resolved in their favor. Now that number grows to 95% if it's resolved on the spot. When dealing with a guest who has a complaint, simply follow these five steps. Number one, smile and introduce yourself. Number two, get their name. Hi, I'm Kevin, I'm the manager on duty and you are? This helps personalize the conversation. Number three, be quiet, make eye contact and listen. Let the guest vent, don't interrupt or make excuses. Number four, Repeat and empathize. So let me see if I have this right. Your and kid. number five, resolve it plus one percent. You know what, I'm so sorry that we let this happen to you, but i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take care of your meal today. I'm also going to give you this complimentary pass for your next visit. I can't believe that we let this happen. I'll tell you what, I'll be back in just a few minutes to check on you and see how things are going. Fix their problem and exceed their expectation. If they lost three tokens, give them four. If they need a refund, give them that plus a comp pass. And don't ever ask, what would you like me to do? You're in charge. Make the decision. You'll know if you went far enough. Other tips to remember. If a guest is sitting down, get on their level so you're not looking down on them. Don't take it personally that we fell short of their expectations. You have the authority to do whatever it takes to make that guest happy. You are the company. Never say, it's not our policy, or call the corporate office. Let's take a look at some of the forms of adjustment to offer to our guest if, in fact, we do make a mistake. Listen, apologize, free tokens, tickets, cotton candy, balloons, merchandise, remake food, free salads, complimentary passes, refund, a visit from Chuck E. Cheese, or whatever it takes. Since every situation is unique, there is no set answer for a specific problem. Remember, leave the P&L out of your mind. If you negotiate or argue with a guest, you lose. 
To show how inexpensive it is, let's look at a couple of examples. 40 tokens have a $10 value to a guest. The cost to us is 40 tokens times 3.1 tickets per token, which is equal to 124 tickets won. Multiply that number by .0045, which is the cost per ticket, and that equals only 56 cents. Did you know that a bag of cotton candy only costs us about 10 to 15 cents? And a large pepperoni pizza, retail value at $15.98, costs us about $2.20. These items will blow the guest away. Solving the problem will cost far less in the long run than losing the guest. With all the fun and commotion, occasionally accidents happen. If a guest does get injured, you should first and foremost show care and concern. Then follow these simple guidelines. Get them ice or a band-aid if needed. If blood is involved, get the blood-borne pathogen kit and clean up the spill. Don't give the guest aspirin or any other medication. If needed or requested, call an ambulance. Get their name, address, and phone number on a note card and their version of the story. Don't ignore the guest, don't admit liability, and don't offer to pay for anything. Questions about payment will be handled by our risk management department. Fill out the guest injury form out of guest view and fax it to the risk management department immediately. Unfortunately, there are a few instances where a guest crosses the line and is no longer a guest. Verbal or physical abuse, intoxication, or theft. Please refer to both the security and the responsible alcohol service sections of your handbook to see how to handle these type of situations. Delivering the greatest guest experiences will increase guest frequency and build sales. Set the tone, set the pace, and ensure that every guest leaves happy. Hi, I'm Todd from the training department. Our vision is to be known as a premier training company because we execute our standards consistently in all areas of cast and management development. Our quality training really involves many great training tools. The manuals and tests will provide all the details of your job function and you will be tested on your knowledge and skill before you're ready to serve our first guest. The Show Me the Standard cards are located in each area that clearly define all procedures in preparing products as a quick reference. Does it look like the picture? The videos you are about to watch are a complement to all of our other training tools. You will understand the big picture of each job function. But most importantly is your team too. That's your trainer. People train people. Learn as much as you can by asking a lot of questions. As you go through these videos, keep in mind the only thing constant about Chuck E. Cheese is change. We're always changing to make things better for you and our guests. So after you view this next great video, make sure to check your Show Me the Standard board for any changes or updates. Pay close attention and take some notes. You've got to be the expert in each area to be on this awesome team.